Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from Yahuwah the Father and Yahusha our Mashiach, his voice. Hear, O Yeshua, Yahuwah our mighty one, he is yet one Yahuwah. This is Brother David coming to you again to bring you marriage in Torah. This is part four. The concubine slash wife slash side chick. The word concubine in Hebrew is palagesh. And you can hear the English word polygamy. So what does it mean? Second wife. Third wife fourth wife. What do we call it here in America? The side chick. How does our book define it? She is also called wife. Let's begin. Genesis chapter 16 verses 1 to 3. Verse 1. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Verse 2. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now, Yahuwah hath restrained me from bearing. Can we stop for a second? One thing that you will find when you're searching the Old Testament, studying the patriarchs, studying our ancestors, you will find that they never said the devil did it. Whether it be good or bad, everything was assigned to the Most High, the Master of the Universe, the Creator of all things, because he's in control. They understood that. But we picked up so many foolish ideas here in America. Listen to what she said. The Most High has restrained me from bearing. Then she goes to her husband and she says, I pray. I pray. I beg you. Go in unto my maid. Stop for a second. Let me ask the ladies today. If you couldn't bear children, would you beg your husband to go into your servant? To have pleasure with them? Listen, sex is pleasure. In order for a man to obtain an erection, he must be aroused by the look of the woman. He has pleasure. So Hagar was a surrogate for the seed, for a child, and also a surrogate for his pleasure. Listen what she says. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Any children that came out of the womb of Hagar rightfully belong to Sarah. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah. Of course he did. Maybe Hagar was absolutely stunning. Verse 3. And Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. Number 2. Concubine. Palagesh, side chick, second wife. Genesis, chapter 25, verses 1 to 6. Verse 1. Then Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. Sarah had died. So Abraham took another wife. Verse 2. And she bare him Zimron, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. 
Verse 3. And Jokshan begot Sheba and Dedan. We have went through Dedan. Dedan, Timon, Basra, and some others are doomed for destruction. The Moshiach will come through with his glistening, shiny slick sword and cleanse the land. And the sons of Dedan were Ashurim and Letushim and Lumen. Verse 4. And the sons of Midian, Ephah, and Ephah, and Hanak, and Abidah, and Eldah, all these were the children of Keturah. Verse 5. But Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. So the inheritance went to who? The firstborn, or the only son, of Sarah. Why is that? Ishmael was first, wasn't he? Well, he wasn't the first wife. Nor, I mean, Hagar wasn't the first wife. Nor was Hagar the womb of the promise. The promise was that Sarah would conceive and bear a son. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So Isaac was the seed of the promise. Abraham gave the inheritance to Isaac. Look in verse 6. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. They didn't go into Africa. They went into Iraq and Iran towards the east. But look at what Keturah is called. She is wife in verse 1. But in verse 6 she is considered to be concubine. Didn't she marry Abraham after Sarah died? Why is she still listed as a concubine? This tends to suggest that the first wife has all of the power. And everyone who comes after her, even after her death, is considered to be concubine. Genesis chapter 25, verses 19 to 21. Let's take a look at Isaac. Verse 19. And these are the generations of Isaac. Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. All right, look at two words here, son and begot. I want to ask the viewers a question. Did Yahuwah have sex with Mary? The answer is no. So where did John 3.16 come from? Let me quote it for you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We can stop right there. To beget is to have sex. It's the only way to bring forth a son. Are you with me? So, who had sex? John 3.16 tells you exactly who it is. God. Now we know who God is, don't we? His full name is God Ra El. And in the book of Chanak, it tells you he is the one who deceived Eve. So did he beget a son? Maybe. The Bible also tells you that the fallen ones, the fallen angels, came down from heaven, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took wives of all which they chose. How do you get a wife? sex and they begot children by them let's continue verse 20 and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife how did she become his wife he went in unto her he had sex with her 
the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated, Isaac prayed to Yahuwah for his wife. Why? Because she didn't have any children. And Yahuwah was entreated. Yahuwah answered him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. And she bore two sons. Two nations were in her womb. Now let me say something about Isaac. He is the only one who is not listed among the patriarchs that didn't have a concubine, second, third, fourth wife. Why do you think he didn't have a second wife for a side chick? Remember the conflict that he went through with Hagar and Ishmael? He was there. He probably said, I don't want this drama in my life. I cannot deal with it. See, some men cannot deal with having the drama of more than one wife. Because you have to remember something. This Rebecca, she was a handful. I really love and respect this Be- Rebecca. Why is that? Do you remember what she did with Jacob? Okay. She was at the tent. She heard Isaac speaking to Esau and said, Go get me some of that venison, that savory meat that you make for me and bring it back and I am going to give you the birthright. Rebecca overheard this. When Esau went out into the field to hunt, Rebecca ran to Jacob, who was tending the sheep and the goats, and she said, bring me one of the kids of the goats. So, He brought to his mother one of the kids of the goats. She skinned it. She took the meat. She made the savory meat for Isaac, probably curry goat. And then she took the skins of the kid of the goat and put it on Jacob's arms. And then she taught Jacob how to speak like Esau. And then she took the robes of Esau and put it on Jacob's back so that Jacob could smell, sound, and feel like Esau. Now, how crafty is that? (laughs) Isaac had a handful when it came to Rebekah. Just think if he had more than one wife. Let's continue. Genesis. Chapter 29, verse 16 to 18. Let's look at Jacob. Verse 16. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Verse 17. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. Now, I looked at this word tender eyed. I didn't see anything that referred to how her eyes were positioned in her head. Instead, it tends to suggest that she was just plain, normal, regular. But Rachel, she was beautiful and well favored. Verse 18. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Look at the covenant that was struck between Jacob and Laban. I'll give you seven years of my life, hard labor for your daughter, Rachel. Hey, brothers, you want a wife? You want multiple wives? You want a few of them? Well, 
You're going to have to pay for them. You're not going to get the milk for free. You're definitely going to have to buy the cow. That is just the way it's going to work in the kingdom. You have to pay the fair price for her. Look at the absorbent price that Jacob paid for Rachel. Seven years of labor. Genesis chapter 29 verses 20 to 24. Verse 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. Verse 21. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go into her. He didn't say anything about, I need to go to the justice of the peace, get a marriage certificate, none of those things. That's just something that the Europeans have made up here in this country. And you're held hostage under their laws because they have given the power to the woman. Now the woman can divorce you under the laws of the United States of America for whatever cause that she finds that is pertinent to your situation. But marriage is sex, brothers and sisters. Once you went into that woman, she became your wife. Verse 22. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. All right, so they had a party. They ate, they drank, they were merry, they danced. Verse 23. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah his daughter and brought her in unto Jacob and he went in unto her. Now they are married. It has been consummated. Jacob was tipsy, maybe even drunk. He did not notice who he had. It must have been dark. Maybe she had a veil on. Maybe the makeup and everything else made her look different than what she was. But he went into her. He had sex with her. Verse 24. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah. His maid for a handmaid. Verse 25. And it came to pass. That in the morning. Behold. It was Leah. What a deception. And he said to Laban. What is this that thou hast done unto me? Didn't I serve you. For all of these years. Didn't I serve you for Rachel? Why is it then that you have tricked me? Verse 26. And Laban said, It must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Note. Shouldn't he have explained that to Jacob from the beginning? So who was the crafty one? Laban. Verse 27, but fulfill her week, work seven more years, and we will give thee this, Rachel, also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Verse 28, and Jacob did so. He really wanted Rachel, didn't he? And fulfilled her week. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. Was there a marriage ceremony? Once he went into Rachel, she became his wife. Verse 29. And Laban gave to Rachel, his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. Genesis chapter 30. Verses 1 to 5. Now we're going to look at the concubines. Verse 1. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister Leah. 
and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. That's not what she said. She told Jacob, Give me children or else I'm going to kill myself. Why do I think she said that? Look at verse 2. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel for what she had just said. And he said, Am I in the Most High's stead? Am I the Most High? Did I withhold from you the fruit of your womb? That was a question. No, he did not. He probably was going in unto her almost every day. And still she did not conceive. Verse 3. And she said, Behold, here's my maid Bilhah. Go in unto her. What does that mean? Have sex with her. Okay, we've heard this before, haven't we? Didn't Sarah beg Abraham to go in to Hagar? And she shall bear upon my knees the seed that would be born of Bilhah would rightfully belong to Rachel, that I may also have children by her. She was a surrogate. Hagar was a surrogate to have children. Also, they were surrogates to pleasure Abraham and Jacob. Does that sound weird to you ladies? That you would give your maid so that she could pleasure your husband? Did you know that sex was pleasurable? Do you know in order for a man to get an erection and have a strong e ejaculation he must be attracted to the woman and it must be pleasurable? Did we miss all of these things? We also missed who were giving these men their second wives. Verse 4. And she gave him Bilhah her handmaid to wife. Once he went into her, she became his wife. Concubine. Pelagesh. And Jacob went in unto her. Verse 5, and Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. Wow, that was quick. How do you think Rachel is feeling right now? She must be feeling inferior. She must be traumatized by what is happening. I mean, Leah is having them left and right. And here Rachel cannot have one. Now she gives her handmaid to Jacob and she conceived immediately. So Rachel figured out from here the problem is not Jacob. She should have known that already. The problem is me. Genesis chapter 30 verse 9. I'm going to drop down a few verses to look at Zilpah, the concubine, Leah's handmaid. Verse 9, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she wasn't having children anymore. Maybe she went into the menopause. Who knows? She took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her to Jacob to wife. What does that mean, wife? Now we understand what wife means, don't we? To have sex. For him to go in unto her. To have pleasure. There's something different about the women of old than the women of today. Are you seeing it? Who was giving 
their handmaids to their husbands. It was always the first wives when it was dealing with the patriarchs. Are you seeing it? You see, you've been destroyed by Christianity. They told you things like marriage is between one man and one woman. Do you know where they go to for that? It was not so from the beginning. That's correct. How many people were in the garden? (laughs) Adam and Eve. When the daughters of men begin to multiply upon the face of the earth, then Lamech was the one who took the second wife. The fallen angels were snatching up the daughters of men. Are you with me? This is ancient. This is not nothing new. Do you know what's new? That a man being here in America and only allowed to have one woman. You can't stop it. No matter what you try to do, you will never be able to stop a man from having a second wife. So why not control it like they did? Let me say that again. Why not control it like these ladies did? They gave their maids to their husbands as concubines to be his wife, to give him pleasure and to bring forth seed. Look at the law. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 18. Anytime you see a practice, you have to see whether it is prohibited or permissible. I could not find anything negative about what the ladies were practicing. But this is what I did find. Verse 18. You shall not marry two sisters. For they will be rivals. That is the truth. You saw that Rachel, she was jealous of her sister for having so many children. She was about to kill herself because she was so envious of her. It doesn't work for you to marry two sisters because they're going to be rivals. However, if your wife dies, then it is all right to marry her sister. Maybe that's frowned upon here. Not in the kingdom. Why would you marry your wife's sister when she died? She looks like her. She may even talk like her. She has the same mitochondrial DNA like her. You want someone who is close to the person that you love the most. So you may choose her sister. Genesis. Chapter 30, verse 14 to 15. Okay, ladies, it's time to let you see who's in control of these situations. Verse 14. And Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest, and he found mandrakes in the field, and he brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Hey, you got mandrakes? I pray you, please, give me some of thy son's mandrakes. Verse 15. And she said, who said? Leah said unto her, unto Rachel, Is it a small matter? Is this such a small thing to you that you have taken my husband? Hold it. Let's stop for a second. You do not marry two sisters for they will be what? Rivals. Now Leah has accused Rachel of stealing her husband. And wouldst thou take away my sons, steal my son's mandrakes also? 
And Rachel said, Therefore, he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. Hold it one second. Ladies, did you see what just happened? Rachel pimped out Jacob to Leah for mandrakes. Rachel is the pimp. Verse 16. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, not knowing anything that transpired. And Leah could not contain herself because of her good fortune. So she ran out to meet him and said, you must come in to me. What do you think she's really saying, ladies? You're going to have to hit this tonight. For surely I have paid for you with my son's <laughs> mandrakes. Who's in control here? Listen to me. Who is in control here? It's the women. Jacob was out in the field tilling the soil, taking care of his business. <laughs> Didn't have a clue what was happening behind the scenes. You see, women are smart, very smart. And when a woman is so smart that she knows how to function like this, she can always get what she wants. But look at what Jacob, what she told Jacob, I bought you. And then she told him the price that she paid for him. <laughs> mandrakes, roots. Do you guys know what mandrakes are? It has many purposes. But the number one purpose that they would use it for, it was a fertility plant. That's why Rachel wanted it so bad. And he lay with her that night. So listen to this. Rachel was the pimp. Leah was the John. She paid for him with mandrakes. And Jacob was the prostitute. Now tell me, who's in control of these situations? Polygamy in the scriptures. We just want you to see that the book is not like the Europeans in their ways. Matter of fact, it's total opposite of what they teach and what you learn in the church. In the church, they teach us that for you to have more than one wife is sin, transgression of the law. That's what sin is. You will not find it being prohibited in the law, but you will find that it's being controlled in the law. Lamech, a descendant of Cain, had two wives. Abraham had more than one wife. Some were called concubines. Nahor, Abram's brother, had both a wife and a concubine. Jacob was tricked into polygamy, Palagash, and later received two additional wives, bringing a grand total of four wives. Esau took a third wife to please his father Isaac. Ashur had two wives, Obadiah, Joel, Ishia, and those with them had multiple wives. Shaharim had at least four wives to whom, two of whom he sent away. Caleb had two wives and two concubines. Let's continue. Gideon had many wives. Elkanah is recorded as having two wives, one of whom was the godly woman Hannah. David had at least eight wives and ten concubines. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Okay, let's stop here. Why do you think that Solomon had so many wives? The tribe of Yehuda was the most powerful nation on the planet. Every tribe 
every nation, nation, every kindred, every tongue wanted to be allied with us. So in those days, how would you ally yourself with another nation? You gave your daughter to the king, which assured that if you went to battle, that Yasharal, Yahuda would go to battle with you. And if Yasharal or Yahuda went to battle, you would go to battle with them. So all of these wives were given to Solomon so that the other nations could ally themselves with him. And the 300 concubines, they came with the wives. Are you with me? That's why he had so many. Did you think in your mind that he went out there searching for these wives? That's the way that Christianity makes you think, but it was not so. Rehoboam had 18 wives and 60 concubines and sought many wives for his sons. Abiah had 14 wives. Ahab had more than one wife. Yahuram had multiple wives. Yehoiada the priest gave King Joash two wives. Yehoiakim had more than one wife. Okay. I know the brothers probably don't have a problem with any of this. But the wives will. Once we get into the kingdom, you can control the outcome of the women whom your husband sleeps with. Let me tell you one of the benefits of this. Your husband doesn't go outside of your home, outside of your control, to go and sleep with a whore and bring back some disease and give it to you like we do here in America. Because you're going to give him fresh, clean virgins to sleep with, to be his concubine slash wife slash side chick to give him pleasure and to bring forth seed. Does that bother you just to think about it? Him sleeping with another woman and having pleasure? Well, it shouldn't. A woman is unclean seven days plus one Eight. She doesn't want to have sex all the time, does she? She's not like a man. She doesn't have all of this testosterone that is building up what he has to get a release or else he can get sick. Do you know what the sickness is for a man who does not constantly use this gland that the Father has given to us to bring forth seed? Have you ever heard of uh, prostate gland? How it swells and the man cannot urinate or ejaculate properly, it hurts. It's from lack of use. Speak to any man here in America. They'll tell you once that woman has papers on you, the sex stops. She's too tired all the time. She may have a headache or she may not be in the mood. Then her period comes. What is the man supposed to do? He produces so many sperm cells daily. Is he supposed to go to Mary Palm in the five fingers? What about going to one of these pornographic websites and watch others have sex? Hmm. I believe that's all wickedness, right? So the women, they took care of their husbands, as you see here. The question is, if you were faced with this in the kingdom, what will you do? Will you control it? 
or will you let things just get out of hand and cause all types of chaos in your camp? Continue to part five. Shalom.